Okay, so for topic 2.5, so it's going to be something that you have seen before. So basically, this is just revision for you guys. If you're already familiar with this, so no, just keep the video and examples and simply proceed to the exercise. Because I'm pretty sure you, everyone, every, each of you have already seen this. Okay, so uh, if I have two functions, so namely I'm going to have two functions fx and gx, what happens is that there could be four operations that I can do on this function. So these are operations that we actually seen on numbers. First is called a summation of function. So if I have f of plus uh, f, uh, f plus g of x, so that is the same as having fx plus gx. And if I have uh, the difference of function, if I have f minus gx, that is equivalent to fx minus gx and in terms of product as well. So when I have f dot gx, so it's the same notation as having fx multiplied by gx. And if you have f over gx, that is going to equal to, you can separate them and make it into fx over gx. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate by using this particular example. And if you are familiar with this, you no need to finish until the end. Just uh, go through the example and proceed with the exercise. So first, I have a function of f plus gx, as we have seen before. So this is equivalent to fx plus gx. So now let's uh, copy down the function fx. For this case, my fx is going to equal x minus 6. So let's put a bracket around plus my gx and my gx is going to be given by x square minus 2x plus 1 and if it's possible to simplify please simplify them and if i were to simplify i'll end up with x square and then i'm going to have x minus 2 add that is going to be negative x and then i'll end up with negative 6 plus 1 that is going to equal negative of 5 so my function is going to be x square uh, minus x and also minus 5 so that's going to be for a and for the case of b so i have f minus g of x okay so this is pronounced as f minus g and this is pronounced as of x so therefore this is equivalent to f of x minus g of x so my f of x is given by x minus 6 again i'm going to put a bracket around minus g of x g of x is given by x square minus 2x plus 1 so let's have a look if i copied that correctly yep and so when i simplify i'll end up with a negative x square and then i'm going to have x plus 2x that is going to equal 3x and negative 6 minus 1 that is going to be negative 7 okay so i'm going to have negative x square plus 3x minus 7 for b and for c so what operation is involved? I'm going to have product f multiplied by uh, g. So I'm going to have f g x is actually equivalent to having my function f of x multiplied by the function g x. So now I'm going to end up with x minus 6. So multiplied by x squared minus 2x plus 1. All you have to do is expand this. First, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by x. So I'll end up with x cubed minus 2x square plus x and then i'm going to multiply all the three terms by negative 6 and i'll have negative 6x square plus 12 of x minus 6 and now let's simplify them i'm going to have x cube when i simplify this two uh, i will have negative 8x to the power of 2 and this two right here is going to give me plus 13 of x and I'm going to have a constant of negative 6 at the back. So that is going to be the outcome. So let me check that again. x cubed. And then I'm going to have uh, negative 2 minus 6. That's negative 8. And then I'll have 1 plus 12. So that's going to be a 13. And then a minus of 6. That's right. So that is going to be my product. And for the case of d, d is going to be division, I suppose. So I have a function of g over r. So g over r of x is going to equal a function of gx over a function of rx. So what is the g function? So it's given by x squared minus 2x plus 1. And the function of r, so that is given by square root of x minus 5. Can we actually simplify this? The answer is no. 
they're of different power and we cannot simplify the bottom as well so therefore simply just leave it like that but if you can simplify simplify it but for this case there is no way that i can simplify so therefore i'm just going to leave it in that form okay so it's going to be as simple as that so it's going to be the same as operation plus minus multiplication and division by numbers only now it is going to be in term of variables that would be the only difference okay so please Next, let's talk about a uh, composite function. According to the definition, composite function are functions that can be expressed as combination of two or more basic functions. So basically, you combine a function in a function. So let me give you the idea of what happens when you have a composite function. So let's say if I have f of x is equal x plus 1. So if I were to change this function to y, so let me use another page instead. Okay, for example, let's say if you have a function of f of x is equal x plus 1, I can actually change this to uh, some other variable. I can change this to f of y. So the rule is going to be very simple. Every single time I come across x, I have to replace that by y. So now for this case, and this is going to be y plus 1. Okay, so that will be the idea. And it's going to be pretty much similar when you have a composite function as well. For example, let's say in f, I wanted to put a function g of x. So what happened is that whenever every single time I come across y, so that is going to be replaced by g of x. So this is going to be g of x plus 1. So that will be the idea. So basically, instead of like replacing the variable, so you put another function into the variables. And please do not get confused between uh, the notation for product and the notation for composite function. So product, usually it's going to be written like this. If you have like um, a function of f g x or f dot g x. So that is going to be in terms of product. So what happened is that for composite functions, so this is going to be product. And for composite function, so it's going to be written uh, one in terms of f dot gx. So this dot that you have right here, so it's a big circle with, uh, so it's a big empty circle. But this one is going to be simply a small dot for product. Or it could also be written in the form of, so it's going to be um, f, and I'm going to put a bracket with g of x. Okay, so that will be notation for the case of composite function okay so here um this is an example suppose i have a function of gx equal no that's not a highlighter so i have gx equal x square and each x equal to x so if i wanted to substitute uh, my gx into hx so all i have to do is as i mentioned to you before is going to be substitute so here what happened is that my h of x is given by 2x so if i wanted to substitute g of x in there so i'm going to have 2g of x so what is my g of x so that is going to be given by x square so therefore this is going to equal 2x square so that would be pretty much the idea of this okay and please like be mindful the fact that if I substitute a gx into hx, that is not going to give you the same answer as when I substitute hx into gx. If it's a product, yes, they are equivalent. But if it's a composite function, no, they are not equivalent. Let's proceed with this example. So I'm going to find a composite function involving these three functions right here. I have uh, three different functions. So which are f of x equal 3x squared plus 1, gx equals square root of x minus 7, and the last one is h of x equal 1 over x. So let's start with the first one. So I'm going to start with a for which I'm going to find uh, f of gx, f of g of x. So let's start with f of x. So f of x is given by 3 x squared plus 1 but now i'm going to have f of gx okay so what happened is that whenever i come across x in the function so 
the x is going to be changed to g of x. So therefore, for this case, so my function is going to be transformed to 3. And then I'm going to have g of x. The whole thing is going to be square and plus of 1. So that is going to be my composite function. And now I'm going to simplify this. So I'm going to have a 3. So what is my function g of x? My function g of x is given by uh, square root of x minus 7. So the whole thing is going to be square, and that is going to be plus 1. And we know that when we have a square root, this is actually equivalent to 3x minus 7 to the power of a half. And this power of a half is being square. And this two, they're going to cancel each other. And at the back, I still have plus 1. But now I can simplify my function. So I will end up with a 3x minus 21 uh, plus 1. So which is going to simplify to 3x minus 20. So that is going to be my first composite function. Okay, and now I'm going to proceed to B. So what is going to be for B? For B, I'm going to have G. I'm going to substitute F into G. So what is going to be my function gx? So my function gx is given by a square root of x minus 7. Right? So I'm going to be substituting um, f in there. So I'm going to have g of fx is going to equal. So for this case, uh, whenever I come across x, so that is going to be square root. So let me highlight the place. This is x. This is x. So f of x is going to be where we have the function x. So it's going to be f of x minus 7. Okay, so this is my function f of x. And now I can start substituting into here. So I'm going to have um, f of x. So that is going to be given by 3x squared plus 1. So I'm going to have 3x squared minus 1. So that is my function f of x minus 7. So you can also write it without the bracket. So there is no problem with that. And if I were to simplify, I will simply end up with 3x squared minus 8. And it's going to be square root of the whole thing. Square root of 3x squared minus 8. That will be g of f of x. Okay, so that will be for b. And for the case of c, I'm going to have h of gx. So let's start with h of x. So my function h of x is given by 1 over x. Is that right? Yep, it's given by 1 over x. And I'm going to substitute g in there. Okay, so I'm going to have h of g of x. So that is going to equal 1 over g of x. Because, so whenever I come across x, I'm going to change that to g of x. So that x, 1 over x, is going to become 1 over g of x. And this is going to be equivalent to 1 over g of x. And my function g of x is given by square root x minus 7. Can I simplify this? The answer is no. So therefore, I'm simply going to leave it like that. So that is going to be our function h of gx. And the last one. So which is going to be d. So for d, I'm going to have h of g11. So it will be the same idea as previously, but uh, so what happened is that we can simply uh, substitute right into that. But, but suppose that we don't know C, so we don't actually find C. So how do you find for cases like this? So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I noticed that it's going to be much easier if I start with finding G of 11 first. So before I start finding the whole thing, I'm going to find what is going to be G of 11. Okay, so g of x is a function that is given by a square root of x minus 7. Now I'm going to convert this to g of 11. So the idea is still going to be the same as what you have seen previously. x, so 11 is, x is going to be replaced by 11. So therefore for this case, I'm going to have square root of 11, square root of 11 minus 7. So that is going to equal square root of 4, so which is going to be plus minus 2. But let's let's put a 2 for this case, okay? So g of 11, that is going to equal positive of 2. 
So now that I already know that this is going to be 2, so basically when I wanted what is going to be h of g of 11, so what I'm looking for is just going to be a function of h of 2. Okay, so what is going to be h function? So h of x is given by 1 over x. Okay, so when I wanted h of 2, so that is simply going to equal... Uh, 1 over, sorry, this is not right, so g of, that's right, what am I thinking? Okay, so basically that is going to be h of 2, so therefore for this case, when I come across x, I'm going to replace the x by a value of 2, so this is going to be 1 over 2, okay? Or instead of doing it this way, so this is going to be one way of doing that, which I find it easier. What you can do is, first you can find what is going to be h of gx. Then only from whatever that you get, you will substitute what is going to be h of g of 11. So it's going to be like this after you have already composited. So you're going to have h dot g and then you're going to replace the x by 11. So that is possible as well. But like which way is going to be easier? I always find that. So solving whatever that you have in here first will make things easier for you. Okay? So, but however, how are you going to do that? So I'm going to leave it to you. But both of them are going to give you exactly the same answer. Uh, for the next example, so we're going to have a look at the case of like when you're given a composite function. But one of the function is unknown. It could be, could be the function uh, at the front, the function that you substitute into, or it could also be the function that you try to substitute. So here, uh, given that a function f of x equal for x plus 3, so we are going to find what is going to be the function of g. If we have two scenarios, so f of gx equal to x squared plus 5, and g of fx is equal x squared plus 1. Okay, we're going to start with the first one. So here what happened is that, uh, so the function that we're going to find is the function that we are substituting, the function that we, we want to substitute into the function f. All right, so basically we know that if I have f dot gx, so I'm trying to substitute g into f. So uh, what happens is that it's going to be something like this. So this is actually f of gx. I substitute uh, g in uh I substitute g in f okay so what happened is that when i substitute g in uh f so whenever i come across x in the function i'm supposed to replace that by g so the function is going to be 4 g of x plus 3 and according to what we have in the question that is equivalent to 2x squared plus 5 and here by just rearranging this we can simply get what is going to be the function gx so I can get that 4gx is going to equal 2x squared plus 5 minus 3. That is going to equal a 2. And I will get that my function g of x is actually just 2x squared plus 2 over 4. So that is going to be the function g of x. Okay, so now, so that is going to be the first one. It's a pretty simple calculation. So when you wanted to find a function at the back, so that is going to be much, much simpler than trying to find the function at the front. Okay, so I'm going to have the next is going to be g dot f of x, and that is going to equal x squared plus 1. Okay, so what is g of f x? So meaning that I have a function g. So in g, I substitute a function f of x, which for this case is going to equal for x plus 3. And the outcome when I substitute is going to be x squared plus 1. So what should I do is first... First step, I'm going to let y equal for x minus 3. And from here, I'm going to find what is going to be x. So I'm going to rearrange them. So y is going to equal, so x is going to equal y plus 3 over 4. Okay, that is going to be step number 1. So step number 2 is, I'm going to substitute x into the original equation. So substitute x into uh, original equation. So what's wrong with my pen? Okay, let's add another page. It wouldn't fit. 
okay so what happened is that i will end up with something like this so i will get a uh, g of y because now so we have already let this as bin y so it's going to be g of y is going to equal uh, x squared plus one and now we're going to substitute the x right here with the function that we have obtained uh, from the previous calculation and we will get that g of y is going to equal y plus 3 over 4 square plus 1 okay so now i'm going to simplify this so i will get that this is going to equal uh, y square plus 6y plus 9 and it's going to be over 4 and this is going to be plus 4 over 4 because we know that 1, that's simply going to be 4 over 4. So therefore, when I simplify, I'll end up with y squared plus 6y plus 9 plus 4. That's a 13 over 4. So this is going to be my function gy. But the problem is that we don't want a function gy. So we wanted a function of gx. So that is why the last step is to change gy to be in terms of gx. So my gx function, so whenever I come across y in the calculation, so I'm, going to, I'm supposed to change them all in terms of x. So gx is going to equal x squared plus 6x plus 13, and that will be over 4. So that will be the outcome, okay? So it's going to be as simple as that. So of course, there will be...